Alrighty then. This is at the time of this of this recording. This is the third week in July. And uh, next week will be the second anniversary since I had my surgery. Thank you to those who are uh, happy that we are still here to have these conversations and these talks. I, I thank you so much. <laughs> there are those who of course wish that it says there are those who wish that I had died on the operating table. That's a shame. These are Christians, these are Muslims, these are Pan Africans, these are the ones that claim they love black people, they love peace and joy and happiness. And then they would tell you, that's what I'm about. I love black people and Islam means peace and I'm a Christian, it means love. But that angel snuffing up seven is a low down. Dirty, dirty. <laughs> he deserves to die. Now, I think of myself, and of course, I cannot compare myself to the great Malcolm X, may he rest in peace. But when you wish somebody to die, take the only life that we have. I mean, they must have done something really, really terrible. And I understand the excuses. I understand. And let's just say, for the sake of argument, that Malcolm X is 1,000% guilty of the things that the Nation of Islam was angry about. Let's just say, if I am 1,000% guilty of the things that the people talk about. Now, you can beat Malcolm up, up break his leg, beat him up, you can beat me up, slap me around. <laughs> but have we done something so heinous, so wicked, that rises to the level that you want our life to be taken? This goes to show us how sick we are. And then... These same people who want Malcolm dead, who want Angel Snub Nub 7 dead, they do nothing to those who actually deserve. You live in a nation that have murdered countless people, maybe even your relatives. They drop bombs on people every day. And you are not out here planning their physical death. I'm just, it's just mind boggling. I have been on social media since 2007. I've had countless people that want me dead. I have countless people that make nasty videos about Angel Snub Nub Seven. I've never come out of my mouth to say I want you dead. You talk about me, so what? You have the right 
to your opinion. I, I, I could care less. I'm a public figure. I have an opinion that you don't like. That don't mean I should want you dead. But you have those who are so sick in the mind they think that way. Now, what brings me to this video is this. Two years next week will be my anniversary from my surgery. And two years ago, I was laying in a hospital bed with all, with all kinds of tubes and machines hooked to my body. I could not move. I could not eat anything physically for over a week. I could not drink water for over a week. Everything had to come through a tube. So almost two weeks later, I'm trying to heal up. I'm trying to get well. And I am being rehabbed. I'm walking around. I'm, I still have all these machines, but I'm walking up and down the hall with these machines still hooked on, getting stronger and stronger. It gets to the point where in about two more days, I can get all this tubings and all this urine bags and all this crap. I can get all this stuff taken out. So the hospital <laughs> so the hospital goes to the insurance company and they report my progress to the insurance company. And the insurance company says we're not going to pay no more. Sounds like this man is healthy enough to go home. But I only have two more days. You can take this stuff off me and I can go home without all this crap. The insurance company said you can pay for it yourself. We're done. You got to go. So, of course, I'm not in a position to stay in the hospital like that I, and the hospital a insurance company don't want to, not going to pay for you to be here no more it's only two days but that's a lot of money I mean over a thousand some dollars a day the insurance company oh no no get them out of there so I have to go home with all these, some of these tubes and stuff still intact. I'm saying this. I'm bringing this to say this. In religious scriptures, it says, from the Bible, I believe, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I don't read the Bible no more like I used to. I don't read the Quran like I used to. So, some of you are going to have to help me with these religious scriptures. I do remember certain things. and It is said in the Bible, I believe, only the sick need a doctor. Now, clearly I'm not really well, but the insurance company say you're well enough to get out of this hospital. We're not paying the bill no more. The Bible and the Quran are for the sick. When you're sick. Because only the sick need a doctor. Once you're healed, and according to the insurance company, when you're well enough, you need to get out the hospital. So this tells me that I don't need the Bible. I don't need the Quran unless I feel as though I, I'm sick, as though I need medicine. And really, that is what you're saying. 
those of you who need the Bible and the Quran, you are saying that you are sick. Because only the sick needs a doctor. Only the sick needs medicine. There's nobody in their right mind except uh, what they call a hypochondria act. Somebody who think they are sick. There are people who think and they manufacture and imagine that they are actually sick. And the doctor gives them placebos woo, for their fake sickness. Because the sickness is not real. The Bible and the Quran does not talk about a Bible or a Quran when you go to heaven. Because clearly there you're not sick. But the Jesus... And the Quran describes a time even prior to us going to the hereafter or going to heaven where you should be well. The Bible and Quran are supposed to be books of healing. You're not supposed to be sick forever. But the problem is, well, what do I do? Act natural. Be well. You don't need it no more. You ever go to a hospital and you are well? And how sick people look at you, I will, oh man, I wish I was like you. They sitting, they sick and coughing and hurting and man, I wish I was well like you. This is how they look at us at the reality's temple on earth. How can you operate? How can you move? How can you function without medicine? Without God? Because they are sick. They are hurting. They are in pain. They don't, they have not healed. So, they don't understand what it means to be healthy. We don't need a crutch. Jesus can't make me walk because I never was lame. I'm not lame. Jesus can't make me see because I'm not blind. Only a doctor. Only the sick need a doctor. And this is, this is why so much anger also. It's jealousy and envy because they don't understand. We can accomplish anything you accomplish and more and we don't need medicine we don't need God because we're well we don't have to quote from the Bible every day we don't have to quote from the Quran every day because we don't need that we don't need to take medicine because we are well you take pride I'm a Muslim I'm a Hebrew Israelite I'm a Moor and you go through these rituals. You go through these rituals every day, every week. You perform the ritual, but you never become or can produce what the ritual is supposed to symbolize. But we do here. And it all is supposed to lead us back to a natural way of thinking a natural way of life these drugs many of these drugs that we get they are not natural they are synthetic and even if they were natural it's because you're sick you're not well so we're well here and if you want to be well and you understand that you don't need a crutch you have gone beyond Bible and Quran and all religion and spirituality. This is the place to be.